A lot of people I work with ask me how I go about recording my videos, my tutorials, my quick video production techniques, and also my live streaming setup as well. So I wanted to cover that in this video for you to show you how I do that for free using a platform called OBS Studio, something I've used, tried and tested for a number of years now. Now, before we get into that, if you are watching this on whatever channel, please do consider subscribing or following me for more. I am AD. My job is to teach people tech. I've got a whole load of tech tutorials coming up over the next few weeks and they're designed to help small business owners like you save money and save time and also generate more income as well for your business. So let's get into it. I'm inside OBS Studio right now and I'm just going to deconstruct it and get rid of myself off the screen so I can show you exactly what this looks like when you first install it. So here it is, this is OBS Studio, and I'm going to talk you through the different sections of it. So firstly, the big black window at the top of the screen is the preview window that shows you exactly what OBS is recording or streaming. So it's exactly what your viewer can see. Now there's five panels at the bottom here and I'll explain each of them in turn. So firstly, we've got this scenes panel. Now a scene is something you create and you create a number of scenes that have different views for your audience and you switch between those scenes. So for example, if you were a gamer, you might have one scene that has your camera and one scene that has your game. You might have another scene that has your game with you superimposed on it. If you're doing a business presentation, it might be your PowerPoint on screen and separately you might have a camera. Or again, you might want to merge the two together. And I'm gonna show you exactly how to do all three of those settings um, in this video here. Now next along is the sources and sources are all the things that you add inside a scene. So a source could be an image, it could be a video camera, it could be a video file, it could be a piece of audio, it could be an audio input device, that type of thing. In audio mixer, those are the different audio sources that are in that scene and you'll be able to see the sliders in there. And then scene transitions controls how the animation works when you move from one scene to the next. Does it cut from one scene to the other or does it fade in? And then finally, you've got some control buttons in the bottom right hand corner that allow you to start streaming, stop recording, start a virtual camera, studio mode settings and exit. All those covered in other tutorials. But for now, let's give you enough to get started. So I've got this first scene here that I'm actually going to right click on and rename and I'm going to call this front camera. And the first scene I'm going to create is simply a view of the camera that is sat in front of me right now. So I've called the scene front camera and I'm now going to add in the video capture device. And here I get to create a new device or add an existing one. So if I'd already added some sources into OBS, those would be listed here. Let's say I'd added some things into other scenes, I could use those sources in this scene as well. But for now, this is brand new. I haven't added anything at all. So I'm going to create a new one and I'm going to call it Elgato Facecam, which is the make and model of the camera that sat in front of me. I'll click OK and you can see this window pops up with my camera on and it is now ready to add it into the scene. But there's a few things I want to show you. Firstly, I might not want to use that camera. I might want to use one of the other cameras I've got. Very simply, what I would do is choose this drop down uh, menu here and I would choose the device I did want to select instead. I can also configure the video settings here. So things like the brightness, contrast, and uh, camera controls of my camera are all available to me uh, just there. Now I can also change the resolution type and I'm just gonna move this properties window out of the way so that you can see that my camera is a lot bigger than the canvas that I'm working on. A couple of ways I can deal with that. First of all, I could resize the video by just simply clicking the corner handles and reducing the size of it. Expand it again till it fits. I'm just gonna undo all of that. Um, the other thing I could do instead is just change the resolution of the camera because this canvas is using uh, 1080p 
whereas the camera is 4K resolution. So I could opt to just reduce the resolution of the camera and that will therefore fit within the um, size of the canvas. So I would just go custom for the resolution type and I would choose the resolution to be 1080 here. And you can see that's now sized for my window. Now, the other thing I might want to do as well is I might want to crop this. So I've got a bit of white space above my head here. And I've also got a bit of um, doorway here. I might even want to get rid of that door. So what I do now is I hold my finger on the Alt key. If you're on a Windows or if you're not on a Mac, it's the Option key. And all you do then is you drag down these edges. And notice I've now got this green dotted line, which indicates that there's actually more um, camera available past that line. Whereas these red lines here show that I'm at the uh, ed edge of the limit, but uh, these are showing that I can just expand them a bit if I wanted to. And then I can take my finger off the Alt key, just grab hold of the resize handles again, make that uh, fit width and height, and there we go. So that's my first scene added. What I now need to do is add some audio to the scene. So I've got the visuals of the camera. Now what I need to add in is the microphone. And I'm gonna be using this microphone in front of me. There's other microphones available to me on the desk and embedded in the camera, but this is the one I want to choose. So I'm going to go ahead and add that into the scene. This is an audio input capture. Again, I haven't got any audio input capture set up yet. So I'm gonna set up a new one. I'm gonna call it microphone. Oops. and go ahead and click on OK and then I'm going to choose the right device which is this Shure Digital there's all the other devices from my cameras and stuff but it is the Shure Digital one that I want click on OK and you can now see that audio source has been added in here now if that was really really loud I could change this slider just here and bring it down but you can see actually I've got the opposite problem I need to turn it up so this is where I would need to go either into the hardware or the settings for this microphone and just turn it up a bit because where you want to be heading is just kind of in between minus 10 and minus 5. So um, on the basis that that is positioned ideally for me, I'd actually probably put a pop shield in front of it to stop the wind creating those explosive sounds. But that's the right distance for me. So it would be a case of me just dialing up my microphone level. So that's it, that's that scene ready to go. I wanna go ahead and create another scene now, which is gonna be sharing this monitor on my left. So let's go ahead now, add another scene. This time I'm gonna call the scene uh, left monitor. And I'm going to add in this time a display capture. And I haven't got any display captures added yet, so I'm gonna add a new one called left hand monitor. I'm gonna click on okay. And now I'm going to choose the monitor that I want to use. You can see I've currently got two monitors installed here. I'm using that uh, secondary one that just there, which is this is the web page that I've got available. This is OBS Studio. This is what you want to search on Google to get your hands on a copy free of OBS Studio. And you can see you can download it for the various different operating systems here. But that's now sharing on my scene. So I can now switch between my scenes, I've got my front camera just here, hello, and then I've got my screen share just here as well. Now, in future tutorials, I'm going to show you how to set up keyboard shortcuts for these. Uh, in fact, let's do it now, actually. Let's go into this settings button just here. Let's go into hotkeys, and you can see there's all sorts of hotkeys that you can set up for different things. But you've got now switch to scene for the front camera and you've also got switch to scene for uh, the left hand monitor so if i wanted to i could say switch to scene is going to be uh, so this is the front camera let me say i'm going to do control shift and c for camera and then i'm going to do control shift and m for monitor i'm going to apply that now and now just using my keys i can go uh, control alt m for monitor control alt c for camera and i can just switch between those using the keyboard as i'm talking to you very very quickly there we go so you can see when i introduce a stream deck here 
and I program these buttons with that keyboard shortcut. That's how that comes into play. Okay, let's go back to my uh, left monitor screen. Um, let's say I now want to add Superimpose Me as a camera on here. Now, there's a couple of ways that I can do this. Um, but firstly, what I'm going to do is I'm going to create a new scene and I'm going to call this Camera Icon. Okay. And here, instead of adding a camera, I'm just going to add the other scene, which is the front camera scene. Scene, front camera, okay, there we are, we're back again. But this time what I want to do is crop myself into a circle. So on OBS you do this using an effect and it's called a mask effect. And firstly you want to create a very simple image. You'll see what it looks like in a second and you can do that on your favourite image editor like Canva or whatever. Um, but once you've done that, you go into this scene, this camera icon, I'm going to right click and I'm going to go into filters and filters are different effects that you can add on. So let me just add a random effect here. So let me, I don't know, go for color correction. Okay, so if I wanted to, I could really mess about with the colors of this camera and do some right funky things actually. Make myself look green and horror. So that's, uh, that's that color correction effect. Um, we're not here to use that one. I'm going to delete that. The one I want to use instead is the image mask and blend. And I'm going to call this circle crop. Now notice I'm adding this to the scene and uh, not the source. I'll show you the difference in a second. But basically what I have created is a black square, plain black square, with a white circle in, right? You can see that on there. It's a PNG file, and it's literally just a black rectangle, the same size as my canvas, with a white circle in the center. And I've added the image mask effect on, and I've chosen this top option here, which is alpha mask. And basically what that does is it tells it to ignore this black edge. Don't use any of these other settings here because they're not going to work for you. Um, you want to use the alpha mask just there. And I've browsed for it just in here and I've selected it from my computer. Now I can go ahead and close that now. Now what we're saying before is apply it to the scene and not the source. So because I've applied it to the scene, I can now go ahead and I can go into my left monitor and I can just simply add that scene, which is the camera icon. There is my circular camera, which I can now move wherever I want it to be. I can resize it. Uh, I can position myself in the bottom right, the bottom left, top left, whatever. So that's using the image mask and using um, an, an image that I've created in Canva. Now, bearing in mind, that's a, that's a circle. I've created a white circle. You can create whatever shape you want to, you know, a paint splat, a square, a triangle, uh, whatever you want it to be, even the shape of your uh, logo or icon. So that's, uh, that's one way of doing that. Now, the other way of doing this is um, to go, in fact, I'm going to create a new scene here and this time I'm going to call it green screen camera. Now you don't have to go to the hassle of having a green screen camera. Uh, sorry, a green screen and some lights and that sort of stuff. If you've got it, then great. That's, that's okay. But don't feel that you've got to go to the lengths that I have. But there is my camera back on the screen again. So I've created a new scene now and I've called it green screen camera. And here I've got Elgato face cam. Yeah. And now what I'm going to do is make a little tweak. So I've got a green screen that actually is on a frame. It's a cloth green screen and I basically roll it up when I'm not using it. So I'm now just going to go and drop it down for you. So 
So there we go. There is my green screen cloth in the background. And you can see it's got some creases and crumples on it. I have actually got two lights above me here. I've got two lights uh, facing my uh, face as well. So this is the thing that you have to go through. If you're going to do green screen, you know, it can get a little bit uh, complex um, versus just a plain background or even a virtual background on your recording software. But let me show you how the green screen bit works. So I'm going to apply an effect now to this um, um, scene. And I'm going to go in here and add filters. And this time the filter I want to add is this one called Chroma Key. Okay. And actually it's not done a bad job straight away of keying that out. You can probably see there's a bit of uh, shadowing going on just down here. But I know that I can tweak these settings and get that fairly accurate. That's not bad, that isn't. And it's not bad because of the lighting, the quality of the camera, all the bits and pieces I've got going on. But that's not that's not bad at all, that isn't. Um, then what I would do is using the Alt key on my keyboard or options on a Mac, I'm just going to kind of get rid of these edges that I don't want. And just keep myself maybe there. And that's it. And now I've got this green screen um, thing. So if I go back to my left monitor, um, this time I'm going to turn off the camera icon. And instead, I'm now going to add in my scene, which is my green screen camera. And, and there it is. I'm just going to move myself and reposition myself. So now you can see exactly what's happened. I am superimposed on top of this screen. So that looks uh, really good, doesn't it? So a couple of options there. I can either kind of crop myself or if I've got the luxury of a green screen, I can do that as well. And, and like I say, it's now easy for me to switch between these different views. I've messed up the uh, filter on that, so I probably want to sort that out. But uh, you can see how you can play about with these things and get things uh, set up. The only thing I want to say is uh, notice on this scene here and uh, on also well actually uh, this scene as well I haven't got any audio so all I need to do is to make sure if I want to record audio on this scene as well as this scene as well I just want to make sure I've added the missing audio oops it's an input device it's the one I've already created it's the microphone there we go so now you can see when I've got that scene selected um, this uh, is included in the mix as well. Loads more to tell you about this, loads more that you can work on. Like I say, have a Google for OBS Studio. I understand that people open this up and the first time they look at it, it's like, oh my God. And I get it, you know, I was exactly the same. I needed a technical expert to guide me through it just the same. But, you know, it's fairly straightforward once you get the hang of it. And then once you've done that, is literally going into these control buttons in the bottom right hand corner, clicking on the record button, recording it, and then that will save in the output folder. If you want to know where that is, actually go into File and Settings, and whatever you've got stored here in Output Folder just there is actually where your video is going to be saved when it's recorded. So yeah, there we go. And start streaming. That is the button you would click. You would first need to plug in the uh, settings for whatever platform you're using, be that YouTube or StreamYard, Restream, wherever you're going and that sort of stuff. So more tutorials on that coming soon. Like I said, right at the top of this video, I've got loads more tutorials coming your way. They're designed for trainers, coaches, small business owners who want to save time, get better at using tech, uh, make more money and that sort of thing. So whatever channel you're following this on, please subscribe, follow me for more and please give this video a thumbs up because it really, really does help. Hope you found that useful. I'll see you on the very next one.